So once again, welcome. And uh, today happens to be our last um, happens to be our last day for this training before we start our before we do our assessment. So I would like to find out what we did yesterday. Did anybody get any 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 um issues based on the assignments? Hello. Okay, yes, Priscilla, go ahead. Lisa, I've not been available for two days now, so I've missed the classes. Okay. Uh -uh. We shared the recordings for the two days. Uh -huh. But that's fine. So you wouldn't know if you have if you are going to have if you have any issues right now, right? Because you haven't gone through them. Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine. So, um, uh, and from my own side, the only challenge I have, I couldn't even have have time to go through it, honestly speaking. Because okay. I just arrived there this evening and I can even attend this lecture class for one hour as well. So, I cannot say anything on the assignment okay. again. Okay, that's understandable. Um, who else? Uh, all the all the responses that we have received so far, they are they are not really. Uh, uh, how will I put it? They are good. I was. Uh, what will hit me is. Somebody who has been in the class and is still finding a lot of things um, challenging. That's when I would think that something is the issue. But if so far, the ones that we have, those of you that have been there, you have reviewed and you are good to go. And then you haven't had time to do the last ones. Well, that's not uh, a problem. They are uh, heartwarming. But if there is anyone who has been with us and is still unable to make significant progress, yeah, I think that is where we will be entertaining fears and concerns. So that's actually what I want to um, interrogate to find out if there is anyone who is here who is um, not on the same page with us. So like I said, if you are not going to, if you if you prefer to speak to me directly, that's fine. You can chat me up and then we can look at the challenges. Our major um, aim is to ensure that everyone um, leaves this training better than he or she came in. So having said that, I want to find out um, our last discussion yesterday was on visualization. So today we are going to continue on that. However, it is on a different, uh, it's going to be uh, some kind of uh, um, just focusing on how to construct dashboard, making it ready for your placement, for the placement of your chart, and then seeing how you can connect reports and see how you can integrate objects, see how you can format those objects to make sense and um, make it look better. So I'm going to, this was the chart that we did yesterday. So we are going to continue here 
However, permit me to, to come to this point. And I, I guess you all have this. And I told us yesterday that what I simply did was to come over a sheet, a new spreadsheet like this, and go into your view. You see here, there is this grid lines here. You toggle it off. If you tick it, those lines will show. If you uncheck it, it goes off. This making this place very, very plain. If you like, you can leave it like this without putting any color. If you like, you can fill it with any color you want. So now let's leave this for instance. Now I am going to pick this one. I'm cutting it off. And I'm going to place it here in this new one that we are going to be working on now. I'm placing this one. So as I said yesterday, this was the only chart that we plotted. And I'm going to bring all these ones that we designed yesterday. I'm cutting it. Nothing is wrong with where it was before. It's just that uh, I just wanted to start everything from the beginning. So we had already connected this. Let's see again. Yeah, it's working. Still working. All right. So this is connected. Now let's go back to our pivot table, our focus pivot table where we created that one. Let's create another one. Now we had these questions. So we'll be looking at this question. What are the top 10 most utilized? I think that's what we did there. The other one is, what are the top 10 products received in the reporting period? So we're looking at the quantity received. Let's go back here. So with this, I'm going to select everything again. I've selected everything, including this uh, filter, filtered items here. Let me see if there's anything here that will obstruct it. No. Okay. Because I have this here, let me also include that point so that it can go. We can also make reference to it. So maybe let's move it towards the left. So I am copying. I'm not just moving, but I'm copying. Let me drop it here. So this is a different thing that I have copied. And when I look at my pivot table, I'm going to bring this on. Now, let me also say that sometimes when you are working on pivot table and this whole field gets on your way and you want to remove it, you can exit here, close it. But sometimes you may not know how to bring it back. So when you click inside your pivot table, come to your pivot table, analyze, click it, and then you see these buttons here. Just click this field list and it comes up again. So you can use this to work. Now, knowing that this is a different pivot table from this, we are going to create a new chart here. But this new chart now, is going to give us the top 10 based on quantity received. Remember that this one here, this first one was based on the beginning balance. So here we are going to look at quantity received. So we are going to come to this, our item here. We are going to filter label. This is our filter, uh, value filter area. Top 10 is checked. So that is what we want to make use of now. I click it. It's showing me that this top 10 is based on quantity consumed. But we want to look at quantity received. So I'm going to click here, select it, 
okay it and it's going to change so if this is quantity received does it mean that we don't have any quantity received from our data set let's see if all our quantity received no we have some good values okay so let's go back to that point um let me clear this and uh, do that again. I should see. Um, okay, let's go here. Top 10 at quantity received. Okay. Uh, why are we having zero here? So let's check whether there is no quantity received among these selected items. All this one that we have filtered. Let's see if we say we want everything here. Let's see here, everything also, all the consumables. Okay, so it means that we didn't have, the, our data set does not have quantity received for what we selected here. So again, let's see here. So this is everything. Now let's see this thing that we removed here. Let's see if it affected this one here. Yes, it did. What that tells us is that the two of them are connected. So this pivot table, is connected to this one. So they are connected. Now, if they were not connected, then we will do the connection. So I'm going to start the, I'm just going to create a new pivot table from the beginning so that I'll show us the connection. Because I copied this one from the existing one, that connection is still there with the slicers. So I am going to, delete the entire I'm going to delete the entire pivot table and I'm going to get a new one so let me go to my focus this is our data right I'm going to click here come over here select now I want to place this on existing worksheet so I select this one I'm going to where this is and I'm going to select, um, let's see, maybe, uh, let me see where this one is so that it can be on the same line, row six. So let me drop this at row six and okay it. Then I'm going to bring my product, my product here, just like we had for the other side. My beginning balance over here, here, quantity received over here, quantity consumed over here, and physical stock all here. So I'll see them lined up here, column by column. And I want to make sure that all of them are giving me the sum. This one is not giving me the sum, so I need to change it to sum. So you see that I right click here and go to summarize value by, then I choose sum or I come over here and do the same. Again here, the trick that I had, I told us that we need to do is make this one to look like the one that is already there because this is your desire. So I put a space so that you can accept it. I do the same thing over here. I remove this and I put a space here. It accepts it. Physical stock, I do the same thing here come to the end, I put a space. And then for the beginning balance, I do the same thing, remove the sum, come to the end, put the space, he accepts it. So this looks exactly like this. However, it's not going to, the slicers that are controlling this one will not affect this one. The reason is uh, they are not yet connected. So we are going to, that connection so let me bring my filters 
what are the things that we are filtering? We are filtering site, product, and district. So let's go over here and put our site, site, product category, product category, and then district. So we have all this, and then um, let's see if that is exactly what we have over there. We have site name product, our district is not yet there. So now let's get that district back to this point. Okay, even though that uh, this is in the middle here, but we want it at the end. Okay, so let's see. I need to carry my district. Uh, where is the district? District, I want it to come to the end. So I, I change it. It's still is. Okay. So do we have the same thing now? District is down. Okay, so I want the district to be at the middle. The reason why I want it to be exactly like that because I want to copy all that we have here, all these places. I want to copy it. I want to paste them directly there so that they can pick and then we can link our chat title to it. So let me just pull this out, expand this, and then get what I want to do. Let's see how this goes. So uh, let me remove this trick and bring it back to this point. So I have that now. So my district is this way. So the next thing I would do is to copy. Let me go and copy all these things that I have, I have here. So this is just here. I'm going to copy this and this. Then I go and place it here. Okay, so here is 10, here, um, let me see, there's something missing. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think we are good to go. So if I select, let's see if this reads well. Um, which of them now is correct, the top top? So this one is not the correct one, okay? So if I change this one to, of course, we're going to get selected multiple. So let's say we have blue, blue here. Okay, this is not, it's not giving me, so it means we may have to do the this thing again. Let me see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Beginning, physical, city. Uh, why is this not doing? Okay, I think I've seen why. These are supposed to go up. Okay. So we have top 10 here. In of district. Okay. So I think we are good to go now. So let me copy this and paste it here. So this is going to be reading. It should read. Uh, okay, if we can't get that exactly, that means we'll do it all from the beginning again. Let's see, we have up to E. Okay, so just a minute. This is equals to this. Okay, do we have this? Okay, I think we are missing something here. This comes here. So here is supposed to be this equals to this. This is supposed to be equal to this, and this is supposed to be equal to this. You know, yesterday I was 
describing that the reason why we are linking this is once we change, this comes, it takes whatever values that we see here. And then we now have to link this one. We have to link this, our yellow, to the concatenation that we did there. So I'm going to pick here. Then uh, come over here and paste it there. All right, so this is picking now. So if we change this one to first line ARV, okay, it, it shows us first line ARV. And here it's not changing. So the, the, they are not connected. Now we need to do the same thing again. So let me just narrow this down. So I, I can have enough space and manipulate. So right now, we are going to copy this again for our, uh, I don't want to copy that again. If I copy it, it will still be connected. But no, no problem. Once we connect this one, we'll be able to do that. So I'm picking this, I'm copying it. I'm going to drop it, let's say here. And then here is going to, we are going to answer the other questions. The other one is talking about identifying the top 10 products that are currently occupying much space. So when we talk about currently occupying, we are looking at the physical stock. At the end of the reporting period, whatever we see in our store, is occupying space. So the assumption here would be that the, the larger the number of stock we have on ground, the more space it carries, even though that does not really uh, apply because there are some that may have be few in number, but the space they occupy may be bigger. But that our this is our assumption for this training. We are going to assume that the higher the physical stock, the more volume or the more space it occupies. So going back to our data, our focus is not going to be on, let me zoom in. Our focus is not going to be on the first, it's going to be uh, the first top 10 on physical stock that's remaining now. Okay. So I guess this place is also talking about 10, top 10 items by received. Okay, so, so based on our selection here, I think these are the items. So now let's, uh, get our two other we are going to get our two other charts what kind of chart do we put here should we make it separate different from the other one yes let's use a different one let's use but um column chart now so let's use this okay and uh, let's remove all high I mean, hide all field buttons to make space. I want to bring this, our legend, below. Legend, take it to the bottom. Then um, let's insert our chart title, which is there. So let's cut this, take it to the dashboard that we are working on, paste it here. Then there we go. We have seen another chart here. So this is not yet connected to the other one. If we if we are slicing here on the if we are working on this, it's only affecting this one. It's not affecting this one because they are not yet connected. So now let's go back and pick the other create a chart for the third one. Here, our focus is where? 
let's see what we focused on. Top 10 is on physical stock. So let's go ahead and create another one. Let's see what chart now can we create here. Um, okay, let's see if we can create a stacked, let's create a stacked um, columns. Let's create a stacked column. All these ones that we have selected, they are the likely ways that you can present your chart. Let's put this one under. Let's get our chart title over here. Then for this, let's use a different style. Let's bring in our data label, put them inside. Then let's remove this. Uh, for me, anytime I am presenting on uh, presenting visualization, if I have, if the values are small and they can be displayed on each chart, I go with that. And then I remove this to get more space. So I'm going to click here, the axis, let me take away the major vertical. So I uncheck it, it goes off. Then I may also remove the grid lines. Once I have my values there, I remove the grid lines. So let me just click inside and make it visible by using a contrast. Um, I'm using a contrast font color now. However, there are some values that are outside, like this one we see here. This is a value here. But because I changed the font to white, it's now affecting this. So I am going to click it only to select it. And I will retain that black uh, font and then change other ones if I like. These are all optional. And you do it as location uh, serves you. All right, so having done this, I'm cutting this. I'm taking it back again to where we have our chart. OK, so there are a few things that we need to work on here first thing we are going to connect all this so that this one slicer this one that is slicing the facilities this one that is slicing the district and this one that is slicing the product will control all these three reports so that's what we want to do now so let me get this one shift it down now what i need to do is if you click this one and then look at the um, the chart. Then you will see filter connections here. When you click it, this particular chart that I have clicked is connected to these three slicers here. You can see this is a slicer for the district, which is here. This is a slicer for the product category, which is here. And then this is a slicer for the facility names, which is here. That is for this. So this chart is connected to this. Now, if I come over here and click and then go to connection, you see it is not connected to any slicer. So I do that connection by coming to check here so that once you click here, it controls this and this. I OK it. And then it's adjusting now to fit whatever that you have selected here. The same thing happens here. When I click this, I go to my pivot chart analyze, then go to filter connections, connections here. Again, this one is not connected to any, so I'm going to connect them, connect it to these three slicers. Okay, it, again, it's going to adjust. So that is how we do connection. So that as soon as you are selecting anything from this slicer, each of the chart is going to be changing accordingly. And then you can be making your presentations accordingly. Now, the next thing that I want us to talk about is, you see these charts, they are objects. So we need to look at formatting objects and then bringing in other objects and see how we can connect them. Now, there is something that uh, if I want 
assuming that these charts, I want space for them. So now let's remove this uh, chart title over here. Chart title, I've removed this one. We have recovered space. The same thing here, let me remove this. Chart title, I'll check it. We have recovered space. Now, here I can make all these ones, all of them look the same size because you need to make your dashboard look fine aesthetically. So what we need to do is we are selecting all of them. I'm selecting all of them. So what I did to select all of them, as I click one, I hold down my shift and started selecting the other ones. Now I go to my shape format here. I need to give them equal dimensions. So the height, let's say we use six, and then below, let's say we use, um, that's the length now, let's say we use 12. If this is what we want, they are all of the same size. So when you want to organize them to fit in, they will look very, very fine on your dashboard. If this looks more, maybe this is all the the, the chart that I need to bring on this board. If this is all, all I need to do is to go ahead and increase this one to 10. Let's see how it goes. This is 10. This may be too much. So let's use eight. And then here, let's use 15. Good. So this is what we have now. Now, if this also is the space that I want, I can decide to say, okay, this, shift this one here, shift this one here. Now I have arranged them. By the way, let me color the background so that we can be seeing the outline very well. Let it contrast. So assuming I put this, now we are seeing the outline of each graph better so that we'll be appreciating what we are doing. Now they are of the same dimension, but I need to arrange them so that they can be at the same, when you look at them, you see there is precision in what you have done. So let me, I put this one here. I might even put this one here, okay? And put this one here. So if I want to arrange these things properly, let me first of all see if this space is enough for the two, no, it's not enough. So let me bring it here, sorry. Let me shift this one over here. There's something I want to just do. Okay, so this is fine. Now, I want to run some automatic distribution of this. So one thing I need to do is, this one here is fine. So I want to take all these ones, let all of them align to the top and at the same level with every other one. So I selected that, I selected this, I selected this. So I've selected all the charts that I want to distribute. I want them, I want them to be on the same level towards the top. So having selected all the objects, I come over to the shape format. I'm going to align them. So align them, I have top here. So I click top. They are all on the same level now. Now I'm also selecting the three of them as they are selected. I'm going to distribute them across the horizontal grid. So I again come to align, distribute horizontally. So it's going to distribute them such that the spaces between each um, chart is the same. So I click this, it has arranged this, and they are looking fine now. Now, it's not left for me to know what I need to do with this. Now I have these objects, this one and this one. If I like, I can keep them here depending on what my preference is. I like, I can bring it like this. If I like, I can also say, okay, let me just carry them. Let me, uh, sorry, let me just get this. Um, I want to reduce this a little bit. Good. So I want to bring this one out, bring this one out. So for this one, let me, if I use only one, one column, or if I re reduce it to this, I want to see how much of it can fill in here. Um, so depending on what you really want, you can use this, can use this, say, okay, so this looks better. 
Then here, I can come over here and uh, bring this one here. However, you want to make your dashboard look very, very fine. Because when you are presenting it and it's appealing, people attention will be uh people be drawn to what you are the presentation you are making. So at least this looks fine. And so when I'm making presentation, it's easy for people to flow. So let me go ahead here and get us the full screen. So if I'm making presentation and I'll be selecting these consumables, you see all of them are connected. This is lab reagent across. This is a second line ARV. There is no facility that has uh, ARV. What of opportunistic infection drugs? These are them. Then let's look at district by district. So this is how we do connection of our reports and they make them dynamic. As you're changing one, it's also changing the rest. Now let's, the next thing that we want to look at is, um, I want to introduce an external object. So you come over here to insert, then illustration, I can come over here. So you can do a lot. There are several that you can uh, bring here. So what I need to do is I need to just create one and maybe put this one here. Assuming, okay, by the way, uh, when I created, when I removed those chat titles, I actually wanted to, I actually wanted to introduce this and let this one hold my title rather than going there to occupy. So this is this. I'm going to do a lot of formatting on this. Again, so with this, now I can actually also come here. What's the size of this one? Uh, this is 7.9 and 15. I think that it, a lot has changed. So 7.9 and 15.1. So I do the same thing here, 7.5. No, it's not going to be, it's going to be, uh, was it this 15 something? 15.1 or so. Okay, I think this uh, approximately what that looks like. All right, so here I'm going to change the color. Let's say I use this and uh, I can come to effect. Let's use Bevo. Let's use this. Um, I don't know if this is very, very clear. But let's try other ones that will make what we are doing come out clear. So you can see how this looks. I can now connect this to read the title of this chart. So I've selected here. I'm coming right under inside my formula bar. I'm going to type equal sign. Then I'm coming to my pivot table where that title is. So this is it. So I click here, I okay it. You see, it has picked the value there. Look at it here. All I need to do is to go ahead and do some formatting here. Center it, centralize it, increase it. And if I like, I can change the, the if this is good. I know you guys have better color uh, preference than myself. I'm just trying to see what will fit in here. Uh, so let's go with this. If this is too, if the contrast is not good enough, we can walk around to see what can we change. Let's assume we change this one. Or do we change this one? Whatever your preference is. So let's say we choose this one. If this color matches your background, then go ahead. If not, look for what will match it. So this is uh, where I'm going to stop for this session. And then uh, let us ask questions. If there are things you want us to review, we'll review again. And then you now go ahead and construct yours. Thank you, and it's open for questions.
Any questions? Hello, am I being heard at all? Yes. Yes, yeah, people can hear you. Did I lose anyone? Hello. Hello, good hello, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yes. Good evening, Nifunanya. It's like you came in late. No, I've been I've been I've been in the class. Okay, okay. That's good to know. So I'm asking if there is a or it looks like everybody got it. Mm -hmm. So it's when we practice because it's it got tougher today. So we need they to... got tougher. <laughs> you know what we are doing today? This is uh we are done with the analysis. This is just visualizing it. And um, is this your dashboard, just constructing your dashboard? So what do you want to do? You want to go ahead and practice or anybody wants to ask questions? I know some people are already practicing. Okay, so I believe that we've been asking questions before. I believe that uh, if there's any issue, we will we'll ask questions. So I'm going to pause for us to go into our um, practical session. And then we are going to take like um, 20 minutes because we did a lot. I know that the first part, which is analyzing those two other things to bring in your chat, won't take time. What may take time is construction, uh, constructing the, um, the dashboard and then connecting your report. So let's give ourselves 20 minutes by 8.45, we'll be back. So again, I want to find out um, if we all are good to go. Are we able to, do we have the confidence to face any kind of data that involves analysis and visualization that we can face such challenges head on. Do we? Hello, sir. Yes, please. Okay, Ifna, go ahead. For me, uh, okay, so for me, I can't really say I have any challenge now. Okay, so, but, um, I think the videos have been very, very explanatory. That even when you watch it, you could be able to follow on um, step by step. So I know many of us we may not have caught up um, to replicate what you've done, but we trust that um, when, we, uh, when we settle down and watch the video, for me, I will be able to replicate it. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks. That's um, that's good. Like uh, a lot of us have also testified that um, the videos have been helpful and people are catching up with that. So one other thing again that we would like to do is, you know, what we use to run this visualization is um, is a response to our request for people to share data of what they do. And so we disguise this data uh, such that you wouldn't even know where it's coming from. And we used it. So we want you to ask us questions. We will use that questions, turn it around and make it useful to everybody. One thing I've, I'll be doing is uh, if you see some of our videos, and by the way, if you have not subscribed to subscribe to our channel, do because I personally get um I get requests also from people outside the country who have attempted using what we share to develop something. And when they get stuck somewhere, they ask. And that helps us to make a new video in response to that. 
like the one Victor asked some time back about uh, directly changing, uh, I mean, uh, deriving the average of the project duration. So that helped us to create a new one, which will be helpful uh, in uh, uh, resolving some issues about uh, project duration, especially when they are duplicated in a particular data set. So ask your questions. I don't mind. You can, you have my email, you have my WhatsApp, ask questions. Then we can discuss that and help you to overcome that. That way we keep learning. Okay, so we are open to that. And good to know that um, you are practicing and you are using the videos. Is there any other thing you want us to do tonight? Otherwise, we, we have covered what we set out to cover in this uh, training. Anything you want us to... Okay, Bala, your hand is up. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, I'm sorry I entered late today and I just saw the dashboard and the thing, I don't know if I will not disturb you to please summarize it even in five or ten minutes for me. Sorry, I joined well, late. Um, what we did, it's, yes, yes. What we did is, is not something we can summarize even in uh, 10 minutes, but let me just see what um, we can do. I'm very, very sure that um, the, this thing will be of much help. The, the video will be of great help when you watch it. So you remember we, we had, this was what we did last time yesterday. We only had one chat here. And then we had the connect um, three slicers. In line uh, here, we had this, uh, these slicers here, the names of a site, the product category and the district. So those were the things that we had on this dashboard. So when we came today, we decided to create a new dashboard from afresh. And then we demonstrated how we could do that. So what we did was to get a new spreadsheet, then just like this, then come to view here, remove this grid line so that you won't see any those marks here. And then this becomes your dashboard where you can place your different charts. In some instances, people also remove this, this A, B, C, D, one, two, three here, by going to here and clicking header, I mean the headings. So here it kind of becomes spacious to paste your, um, to paste your, your chart. So what, what we did next was to go to our pivot table and we run some analysis. We did two extra. Remember that yesterday we did one, uh, one um, analysis to look at the most uh, utilized product. Okay, so that's what we now came here and said, okay, for today, let us go ahead and do another analysis. So here, we came here and we looked at the most received, the most received, we see it here. We filtered all of them to give us the 10 most received. We are here and we did also, let us identify the top 10 in our space, currently consuming our space, which we say that it is the con the physical stock that we have at hand that is consuming our stock. And the assumption we made then was the higher the the higher the physical stock, 
the more space it occupies. And we say it may not necessarily be so. There are some commodities that even one unit of it will occupy so much space. But for the purpose of this, our training, we made that assumption that the higher, there is a direct proportionality of uh, the physical stock number to the space occupied by that product. So we now went here and did this. So I think the other thing that uh, we did was to now begin to insert charts. So for the purpose of this recap, I'm going to say, let's say this is a dashboard number two as a recap. So let's go back to our pivot table. We are going to insert different types of, um, we are going to say inside different types of charts. And I'm going to generate two different charts from this. So the first one is, I'm going to in, insert, uh, can we go with this? Let's go with this, okay? So we did all the things that we need to do to make it full look fine, like bringing our legend to the bottom like um, removing all these fields. So we are hiding all of the field buttons of the chart. Then here, another thing that we didn't, I can't remember if we did that or if we did it yesterday, was to format this axis and use units. So let's say we are using 1,000, it becomes 70,000 and so on and so forth. Then um, since we didn't have the value set here, it's okay. So we now pick this one, we cut it. Let's go to our dashboard that we want to use now, dashboard number two, and we pasted it, control V. So we have this here. Remember this is a recap that we are running. So we have done this. Now let's go back to our pivot table. Like I said, I want to create two different charts here. And that chart is, having seen this one, let me, because if I do any analysis here, it will obstruct, it will change that chart that we have created. So I'm going to create another one that just below it. So what I did was just to copy that. And I want to, I want um, each value here now to represent a percentage of um a percentage of the total column total here so we are going to see what does seven percent seven represent out of 46,000 plus what does 50 represent with respect to 46,000 plus and so on and so forth we'll do the same thing across here so i'm going to right click here and then i'll say show me value with respect to total of column. So I click this and then this has given me all this. I can do the same thing here, do the same thing here all across. So let me go ahead and do this so that they can give me a uh, percentage total. Show value as percentage total column show value as percentage total column. So now I have this. So let me see if I can even create more than uh, two this is. So I'm, let, let's just create four different, uh, four different uh, this thing from this one. Here, this is one. This is another one. And then this is another one. Let me shift this thing down well. So for this first one, since we are looking at percentage, for this first one, let me bring back my field button. I'm only going to look on the balance. So I'm removing this quantity. Oh. Uh, I hope it hasn't obstructed anything. Oh, it has overlapped. You see, this is a challenge. So I'm going to undo. Um, Sorry, I need to separate these things on um, different places. So, 
Okay, this one, I'll leave this one here. But this one now, let me shift this to somewhere here. Then I think I may have made a mistake. So let me undo that. This is not even seeing this. I see this is no longer all these ones. They are not. Uh, they are not pivoted because I didn't select all of them. You see, this is a challenge. These are not pivotables because when I selected the first one, I left out this top. So let me start from here and drop this one over here. So let me just use these two for example on what I want to do. So here I want to remove the quantity received, received physical stock. So I have this. Then I'm going to look at the top 10. Filter, top 10. My top 10 is going to look at uh, beginning balance. That's good to go. Top 10. Okay, I have fiscal stock here, which is not what I want. I have something SE again. That's not what I want. Why do we have all this here? Okay, so these are the top 10 for balance. I'm going to insert a pie chart here. Legend. I'm going to remove these fields, hide them. So these are the first 10. So I'm cutting this, taking it to this, our dashboard, which we are interested in. So I paste this here. And uh, I go back to this point, pick this one. So I'm going to, again to remove these ones. Now I'm look. I'm, I have my physical stock left. Again, let's let's be sure that uh, is the first ten, right? Uh, filter top ten on physical stock top ten. Good. So again, this one. Let me just use a donut chart. Again, let me hide all this. Uh, bring this one down. Then uh, for this journal chart, let me increase the, let me reduce the hole inside and do this. So I cut this again, take it to my, there's the second dashboard here. Again, let me drop it somewhere here. So now assuming these are the only three that we have because of time, uh, the next thing we did was to, do dimension. Let's change this one to six. Does that give us a good one? Or let's say 10, 10, 10. You know, because of uh, the legend, uh, it, the legend is so much. So that means we need to get this like this. So. Now we do this, then the next thing that we did was to look at how we can automatically get this to look the same. So like here, both of them are wearing the same. And uh, we said we need to also run, say this ones they ask, sorry. Assuming as they are scattered here like this, we can pick them and arrange them automatically. So here we know that the height is six and six. Okay, let's say we select all of them. Let's make the height the same for all of them. So let's put 10. So they are all 10 for different distances. So let's make this one 15. So all of them are 10, 15. Now we want to bring them together. This one might be here. This one might be here. So we can select all of them and say, we want to bring all of them to 
match at the same height. Let them align to the top one here. Having selected all of them, I come to my line, top, align top. It will take all of them to be at the same level. Now, you will see that even if this thing is like this, okay, good enough. You see this and this, they're overlapping. See this one? You see this one? So they are overlapping. So what can happen is, assuming this one is, there is still space here, I can select all of them and tell Excel to distribute this horizontally and it will distribute them equally so that the space between each one is equal. So you see this now. This is one of the things that we did as a recap. Now, the next thing that we did was to connect these things. So I'm going to select one, come into my chart. I want to now put a slicer so that I can be watching different things. Because right now, this is for all the things that are there. For instance, for all the sites, for all the districts, and for product category. Okay, so if I see this now, let me uncheck this product category. This is for this is how all of them, they are all connected now. The reason why they are all connected is because they are from the same, um, they are from the same pivot table. So if I remove this thing to show all districts, this happens. How do we know that they are all connected? I can click here, click my pivot chart, see my report uh, uh, filter connection here. You see that this particular one is connected. It's connected to this product. And okay, there are two slicers. You can see this one for two, and this one is for one. There is one that we have on this other dashboard. So they are all connected, sorry. The one that is connected to this other one here, they are, sorry. This one here, where is it? Is it here? Yes, so these ones are the slicers. If I click any one here, this one is only connected to, yes, my filter connection. See, these ones are connected Okay, even this one, they are all connected together with the other one. So, but if I want to disconnect them or connect, it's the same thing. This dashboard, I want to connect them to, I want to disconnect them to the other ones. Let's say we want to assume that these ones are one or two, but we can actually know the, the names. Let me go away from here. Let me check this one. Which slicer is this? Uh, this is slicer for district. Try to see if he has a name. See, so he has district two. So let me just again this one's recap. District for recap, sorry. District, mm -hmm. district underscore recap. So that we we'll know them. Then this one is product, product category underscore recap. So that if I want to disconnect, I know the one I'm disconnecting. Then this one is site name underscore recap. Okay, so if I click this one now, I come to my analyze. This is my report. I'm going to be disconnecting them from the other one. So um, this is recap, recap, recap. So let me disconnect it from the other one. So anything you are doing there, it will not affect this one. Okay, they are. They, it seems that they are all connected. Okay, I need to do the disconnection from. Um, let me see. Let's run the. Um, how many? These ones are connected to, one, two, three, four, five pivot tables. So now let's look at the names of each of the pivot tables that they are connected. So coming over here, what is the name of this pivot table? So I come to pivot table, sorry. I come to pivot table. Um, this is pivot table six. Okay. 
So I have six. I guess this should be five. Five. So I'm, we're going to disconnect five, six, and which one again? Let's say four. Okay, so now let's go back to that point, dashboard. Um, so let's disconnect from one, three. Yes, let's disconnect this. Then this also, we are disconnecting the report from one and two, one and two. Then this also, I'm disconnecting it from that report, one and three, sorry, one and three. All right, so if I click this one now, what, where is it connected? It's now connected to, okay, no now, so let's see if we connect this to the recaps. Where's my recap? This ah, uh, it's still connected to that. Site name to one and recap. Okay. Um, maybe because of the duplicates, we are creating charts from the, the pivot table that is already connected. Let's see what we can do. So uh, what we actually did was to get this on the dashboard, connect them just the way we have done the connection. Now, just that this one is also connecting to the other ones. Let's see if we come here to do this connection directly. Let's say um, district product and um, site. So is this one still connected to the other ones? Let's see. So we have disconnected that now. When we do, when we disconnected from the pivot table where this was generated, we now come to create a new connection. So you can see that this is now connected to this alone. So whatever happens at the other side will not happen, affect these ones here. So the same thing with this one. Um, let's see the connection that is here. So we have disconnected it from uh, this current one. So it is this connection that when we run and uh, they are all connected. Let me see. So let's disconnect this one from the old ones. Let's disconnect these two from the other ones. Okay, it and then connect it, connect new ones. Still on site name, district, um, product. Okay, so this one, no, I should even have created new ones. Let's connect them to these ones. Okay, so this one, uh, slicer report connection. No, let's connect with this chart to slicer. So we have two and three. This and this. See, it's no longer selecting the other ones. So the same thing here. We have this slicer here. Let's go ahead and connect them. So we want them to be connected. Okay, it's like... So we have connected this now. So as we are running this, it should be connecting the three of them. So as we see it running like this, the same thing will happen. Assuming you have several charts that you have uh, connected. So this is just what we did. And the last thing that we did was to introduce an external uh, object coming to insert illustration and then here, and we choose something like this. But in this case, let's see if we can choose something different. So we have this, and uh, we can do a lot of formatting. We can fill it. We can come to shape, run a bevel. Say we use this or this, whichever one that you want. 
it's going to give you unique uh, shape. We can again edit the shape to change it to something like this. All right, so these are the different things that we did. You can do this, whatever you want to do. And then, so what the next thing that we did was to link this. So we say we can just simply come here, click equals to, and then go to wherever we want to put, say we are attaching this. Okay, it, it picks that value. And then um, we can increase, we can increase this, make it like this, do all kind of formatting that we want, maybe change this in, and then we put it anywhere. So these are the things that we did. So I'm sure that um, this has helped. Please, um, can you confirm? Was it to ballet or? Yes, it does, sir. Thank okay, you very okay. much, sir. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Thank you. So, like I say, we are available to respond to any chat or any questions. And during the week, we'll be sharing the assessment. So, please take time to go through the assessment. It will help you as the more you are exposed to those kind of challenges, the more you develop your skill, the more you learn and hold on to what you have learned. Because if you don't practice, even the one you have learned, you will lose it. So if there is no more question, I would like to thank everyone for your time, for your patience, and your cooperation. Thank you so much. Thank you.